what are actually the rules? What is the scoring system? Mm -hmm. And you said a lot of it depends really on just being honest mm -hmm. and being respectful. So just maybe guide through what goes into the battle and how do you actually yeah, win? Yeah, no worries. So the, the sport's founded on three core principles, okay. uh, service, care, respect. Okay, so service basically just means like I'm, as an instructor, I'm at a service to you, my student who comes in, but also at the same time, you're at service to me by, you know, listening and doing what I'm, you know, what I'm saying, but also you have things that you could potentially, you know, bring to the sport. Yeah. Uh, respect is respect. You know, it's I respect you as my opponent, I respect you as my student, you respect me in the same kind of way. And yeah. care basically means that you're not causing damage to each other. You know, you're making sure that everyone's safe. So no one's walking into walls, no one's, mm. you know, doing like that. And also you're not hitting each other too hard because we don't need any kind of strength. It's what kind of really gives this sport a lot of a balance. Right. Um, so the idea is you just have to lightly tap, you know, the areas in which to score the point. So the way that the points work is you have um, from the elbow down to the hand is an E, from the knee down to the foot is an E. And an E is a non-fatal strike. So if you get hit on one of these kind of locations, so yeah. hand, you know, hand, forearm, knee, wherever, if you get hit on those kind of locations, you declare, you say E, mm -hmm. you remove one say hand from the saber, you move the saber out the way to give your, your opponent an opportunity to score a point, yeah. okay? It doesn't have to be E, five hours later, return right. back, it's just E, and then back into so you know whatever you want to yeah. do. Yeah, so it's fairly quick. You know, you yeah. want to give them an you know an opportunity, but the idea is that you're not making it too easy because you know mm -hmm. you still want to win. Yeah. Um, everywhere else, so um, so upper arm, torso, thighs up to the knee, and the top of the head, they're an R, and the R is the um, where you score the point. Right. Okay. And it's up to you. There's no referee. It's up to you to. We do that. have referees, so we do have a whole kind of. Um, it's called uh, income. We do have a whole governing body. So on official tournaments, um, we have um, officials who okay. will kind of do this as well. But they still rely on you to make your declaration because, as I say, it's all about respect. Yeah. Um, so you get an R. You declare an R. And in fact, if you don't declare, you can be penalised for that because it is right. such a. It's such a founding kind of principle of the sport is that you make your own declarations mm -hmm. um, because at the end of the day, if I hit you and you don't declare, that's going to be really annoying for me. And then it kind of goes down this kind of bad route. So I'm going to yeah. make sure that I always declare because then I'm doing the right thing and I'm not, you know, making an issue yeah. there really. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then the, to win about, it depends on, you know, on, on the rules that have been given to that kind of duel. So, um, a lot of the time, it's best of three. So, you know, you score two Oz, you win your duel. Right. Um, sometimes as well, we have... Um, uh, so usually in qualifying pools and stuff like that in tournaments, we have um, best of three assaults. So an assault is can result in you scoring R, mm -hmm. I scoring R, or we both score an R, which right. is called a doppia. And usually that's just not point, you know, put a point on that one. So it would be a draw, okay. essentially. But then, of course, in later stages, you know, like in knockouts, you can't have a draw. So yeah. doppios get ignored. And does it matter where you get hit? Obviously, apart from the ease, mm -hmm. does it matter that I'm getting hit, say, in the head uh, rather than the shoulder? Or mm -hmm. is the scoring, like the point system is still pretty much the same? It's still the same. So right. if I get hit in the shoulder, it's the same as being hit on the top. <clears throat> if I get hit on the shoulder, yeah. it's the same as being hit on the top of the head. You know, it's still going to score you an R in, right. you know, in the same kind of way. Um, the only time really that an R will get negated is if, say for example, you hit me on the head, but just mm. before I do that, I score and you know, sorry, if you, like you get me on the arm there, mm. and I score an E on you first, like you know, just a few seconds before, and then you make the contact and get the R. That's called an E to R, which is an E okay. before R. So it means that at that point, I've cut your hands off. Okay. Yeah. You can't really score an R on me anymore. Yeah. So then I've got an opportunity. But because these duels can be quite quick and quite um, you know rapid, mm -hmm. sometimes you don't have time to declare yeah. when you're in the middle of doing a strike. You know, especially if you're like this far away from right. scoring the point, and that's usually when it comes. Um, again, you get a lot of honesty. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a guy, um, Lork, in Champions Arena last year, where he lost his um, fight because. Um, the chap he was fighting scored an E on him first, then he scored an R, 
the official was going to give him the point. He went, no, 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 no. There's an E before the right. R. Um, you know, that's not my point. At which point the referee went, okay, no point. Yeah. Redo that round. And then he ended up losing that fight. Yeah. Um, which then took him out of the uh, out of the tournament. I wonder how long that can actually stay because that's a very difficult difficult thing to control, especially as I said, you're growing quite rapidly right mm-hmm. now. Um, do you see either the rules changing currently or in the future to sort of adapt to the growth of the sport? Um, I mean, one of the big things that they've done, um, as I say, in the last couple of years is this introduction of income, so, you know, officials Mm -hmm. to officiate actual tournaments and, you know, maintain this kind of standard um, because it is such a core value that we want to maintain, you know, within the sport that you are self-declaring, that you do, you know, there is this whole kind of honour system. Yeah. um, Because I think that's one of the big kind of draws for me personally is because everyone is very open and honest about, you know, getting that declaration. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, the mentality within the sport is I would rather win right than win, you know, because I didn't make a de- yeah. you know, didn't make a declaration or, you know, something along those kind of lines. Yeah. Um and as I say, if you don't declare and an official spots it, then you get penalized. Right. Um so we have a card based system. So we have um a white card which is a warning. Okay. So if you get a white card, it's a listen. You know, don't do that again. You know, make sure you declare in. What do you need to do? What are the penalties for usually? So, um, so it could be for a few different reasons. I say white cards are warnings. So usually for things like you know declare more. You know, make sure you declare in. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's loud. Make sure you're moving the saber out of the way. That would be a warning first. Um, You know, you hit your heart. Your hits are a little bit too hard. You know, you'll get a warning to begin with, and then if it escalates, then it will go up. You know, in the different mm-hmm. kind of, um, you know, on the different cards, um, it could be. So usually, it becomes down to either lack of respect, though, so lack lack of respect, or lack of cura. Okay, lack of care. So lack of respect is things like not declaring or you know uh, foul language, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, lack of cura is uh, things like being you know hitting too hard, uh, moving dangerously. Um, because we don't uh, stab with the tip of the saber because right. the, be- the blade doesn't bend, so everything has to come laterally. Right. And even in form two, we rotate the wrist so that the blade doesn't stab, but it glides past. Right. So if you go in with a tip, mm-hmm. then you you know you'll get a penalty then for lack of cura. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it happens, you know, with the way that you may move the blade, that yeah. it could be an accident. At which point, it could be a warning. Or if it's happened quite a few times, it's quite dangerous. It could be a yellow card, which gives them a point to your opponent. And it also goes down in your record as well you know, right. as an athlete. That, you know, this thing's kind of recognised. Kind of like how, you know, it does in a lot of sports that is remembered. Mm-hmm. Um, if you meant to do it, then it's a red card. At which right. point you instantly forfeit that ba- uh, that match. Yeah. So you lose straight away. And is that sort of the, the biggest penalty? The biggest penalty is black card. Right. And um, the black card is horrendous. Um, so within Ludo Sport UK, um, we make a slight joke. Like if you get a black card, that's the colour of the body bag, because right. it's it's a big no no. So that's like for malicious intent. So that's like actually going to really cause physical yeah. harm, um, you know, assault basically. Yeah. So as part of that, you know, membership gets you know put under review. Um, police could potentially get involved. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's a big thing really. A black card. Has anybody um, ever had one? Not in the UK. Um, but it has I, happened. I don't know if it's happened abroad. I have heard rumours. Right. Um, but I don't think they found the body yet. So, um, yeah, so I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I just got it now. <laughs>